Hello and welcome to In the Studio. My name is Jeff Shaw and with me today we are honored to have members of the Davis Shakespeare Ensemble with us today. Uh, Gabby Batista and Sydney Schwint. Uh, you guys are both uh, employees at the Davis Shakespeare Ensemble and uh, welcome. thanks for coming in today and talk to us about your crazy busy summer. You guys are always doing something. Um, <laughs> That's true. I think uh, Davis is lucky to have a uh, Shakespeare Ensemble. It's kind of uh, rare it's, uh, for communities to have such a thing. So it's, uh, when I know when the when it was first started, it was sort of a, made a big splash, and it seems like you've you've uh, b continued that work over the years. So anyway, yeah, the summer's going to be a big big uh, production. Um, uh, why don't you tell me about uh, some of the shows that are going on this season that you guys are preparing for before we uh, talk about some of the other other uh, things that you guys are doing? Yeah, great. Well, thanks for having us. First yeah. of all, it's mm -hmm. awesome to be here. Um, well, our shows this summer we're going along the theme of uh, summer of adventure. So we have. Uh -huh. Two shows in repertory, uh, they're going on at the same time. Every other night is a different show. So the two shows we have are Wonderful Town by Leonard Bernstein mm -hmm. and uh, The Three Musketeers. An and so what does that mean, real quick, for those of us who are not, uh, what does in repertory mean or exactly? So we have uh, five shows a weekend, and every show switches. So Thursday night might be Three Musketeers, then Friday night will be Wonderful Town. Okay. So we have to, our crew comes in, they change up the set and everything. And is that um, just to make it totally crazy for yourselves? Or, like, what is the uh, idea behind that, I mean, uh, exactly, as far as uh, set and everything? A right? little bit. I mean, it's definitely crazy, but I think it's, uh, one, it's exciting uh, for our artists that a lot of them get to be in two shows. Okay. So it's a challenge um, for an artist, but it's also for the community. You get to see these people living in different parts, and so we usually pair our shows up on a theme as our adventure theme this year, and okay. that there's something going through each of the shows that lines up with each other, so Very that cool. they're meant to be seen together. Got it. There's some interesting parallels every time we do a rep show. Uh -huh. uh, for instance, there's a character in Three Musketeers who's Cardinal Richelieu, um, and he's the evil character, uh -huh. and he has a scene where he's painting a masterpiece. <laughs> And then he is uh, a populist in Wonderful Town, and he's the landlord, but he's also a painter as ah. well. So it's funny when you, you line up these characters and you go, wait, you paint in both plays? It's really interesting. Now, were, these, uh, was, were those coincidences planned or sort of just uh, those themes run in a lot of uh, plays? or how? Do, I mean, uh... um, Some of the characters are planned just in terms sure. of character arc. Um, okay. For instance, uh, my, my sister and I play sisters in Wonderful Town, and uh, we play rivals in Three Musketeers. And okay. there's a couple, the love interest in Three Musketeers play the cu a couple of Wonderful Towns. So there are some that we partner with, but then there's those little surprises that come up that yeah. are really fun. Like the painting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, interesting for us, and we find new discoveries in that. Sure, and I'm, I'm sure the feedback from, uh, from uh, attendees is great, too. Uh, <laughs> so this runs June 22nd through August 6th, those two. Mm -hmm. And then after that, what are you, what's, what's happening at the end of the summer? We've got fall? a Midsummer Night's Dream. So okay. we extended our festival last year for the first time to coincide with the school year in the fall. Ah. And so our Midsummer Night's Dream this year is actually really exciting because it's our little um, give back to Davis. It's uh, celebrating the Davis centennial. So it's ah. actually set in Davis, and so, there's going to be many bicycles. <laughs> so when you say um, give the school year, you mean uh, UC Davis, or you mean uh, the school district? Uh, uh, both. Both. Okay. Mm -hmm. But mainly for uh, the school district, because yeah. with our fall production, we've started offering student matinees. Oh, okay. So we've been working hand-in-hand -hand with different schools in the area that they come in and they'll see um, their own special production of A Midsummer Night's Dream where the actors stay afterwards and there's a talk back with them. Okay. And yeah. so that's a, that's September 20th in the fall, and it's through October 15th. And yes. you said it's Davis-centric, and how is that again? Can yeah, you, uh, so it's going to be set in Davis. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, and so when uh, the lovers go into the forest, they're going into the Davis Arboretum. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, very cool. <laughs> 
So uh, is work on that already happening then, I assume, or how is that? Uh, uh, not quite yet. So okay. rehearsals for that don't start till August. Mm -hmm. So we give ourselves a little break between the craziness of the repertory, and then we pop into the... Designing will be... Uh, I think mm -hmm. we're in the process of designing the show. Okay, yeah. Most likely. That's the beginning stages of putting a show together. So the design has been bicycles and setting it in Davis, and um, our graphic designer, Evan Clayberg, is putting together the, the graphics for the show oh, okay. and for the poster. So we already have our poster, and... Uh, it's, got, it's got a water tower in the back. And yeah. So it's uh, the Davis Water Tower. So, yeah, it's we're getting started, and we're generating more ideas. And, and yeah. it seems like you pull a lot from the, lo the local community as far as getting artists involved. You mentioned Evan's name, and I know he's a local artist who yeah. is involved in lots of different yes. projects. So your roles at the uh, company, uh, give me... Uh, I know you have an official title, but mm -hmm. what is your what will be your role in these uh, productions as well? And I guess we'll start with you, Gabi. Sure. So as the community outreach uh, coordinator director, I am looking to find more ways to partner with businesses in Davis, especially in the summer season. It mm -hmm. can be slow for some businesses. Uh, you see, students are gone, and the town fills with the families that yep. are coming out for the summer. So it would be great to continue to improve strengthening our partnerships with different businesses in Davis. So we have, uh, right now, the co-op is sponsoring us this summer, which is an amazing partnership. We did patio mm -hmm. takeover. We got to perform on their patio. Oh, very cool. Um, we also have a partnership with, um, we've had past partnerships with DeVere's, and so we have Sudwork here. Uh, so I'm looking to expand in that direction, also looking for ads and just finding ways that we could help other businesses too. We could promote them and they can promote us and it would be so fun to create a grander festival every year just to sure. slowly increase it with beer pouring or even food trucks and have people have lunch in the park in between a two show day. So really trying to expand on that image and idea, especially with the vets and having such a pretty view of the park and yeah everything. and i'm so. glad to hear that davis is supportive of, of the arts uh, but so what is and then what is your role in the production itself in, oh. as far as uh, <laughs> sorry yeah so i'm no I, there's two parts to it there's a lot Many of hats, hats we put exactly. on yeah so that's that hat and the other hat um in wonderful town i play eileen uh, okay. sherwood she uh is she and her sister ruth sherwood who's my sister gio batista uh they are characters from they come from ohio and they're moving to new york to make it big uh, Eileen wants to go into the theater and Ruth wants to be a writer and it is rocky to begin with so they get an apartment and it's not that great it's, it's under terrible a, it's, it's <laughs> terrible it's a, it's a shack under a subway and they're basically outside and uh, so the, yes so and then in Three Musketeers I'm playing um, Sabine so okay. she's another adventurous character she's cool. D'Artagnan's sister yes yeah. And uh, Sydney, how about you? What What is your official title with the company, and then what is uh, what are you, what role are you doing, or what are you doing to, for these productions? Um, so my official title is I'm education director. So we'll get into that a little bit later, talking mm -hmm. about our different education programs. Sure. But uh, for the summer festival, um, I'm fight director for Three Musketeers, which is crazy because there are over eighteen pieces of violence in that show alone. So our Actors are running around the stage learning how to fight with swords. There's knives, there's muskets, there's all sorts of different things wow. they've got to do. That's And do you have a lot of background in knives and muskets? Or, <laughs> no? <laughs> uh, yeah, actually. No. actually <laughs> wow. Um, awesome. Yeah, so I've, I've been personally studying stage combat since I was 14. Okay. Uh, something I fell into in summer camp and fell in love with and have been working towards and. And so which, which production again has 18 pieces of... Three Musketeers. Three Musketeers. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, right. lots and lots of sword fighting. Uh-huh. And are, so your job is to... Um, what is the title for that again? It's uh, fight Director. Fight Director. Yeah. Okay, excellent. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's definitely crazy. Uh, D'Artagnan is in almost every fight, so he's got so much choreography to memorize. Yes. Uh, well, th what, since you mentioned it, let's let's talk a little bit about Camp Shakespeare and yeah. Shakespeare in School. So what is that exactly? And I know this is done each summer, is that yes, right? Yes, so we're about to enter our seventh summer of wow. Camp Shakespeare. Yeah, so um, every summer we've got um, several different camps that happen in the Davis Arboretum. Okay, right. And um, our first camp session is July 10th through July 21st. All right. They're for ages 8 to 13. And there our kids get to delve into Shakespeare. Uh, we do scenes from our summer, so they'll mm -hmm. be 
They'll be doing some Midsummer Night's Dream. They'll also be doing a little bit of Three Musketeers, even though it's not Shakespeare. Sure. Um, and from there, they, they learn some Elizabethan dances. Uh, we teach some sword fighting. I was, gonna, I was just going to ask, are they nope. doing any sword <laughs> fighting? They are, definitely. <laughs> they actually get to make their own swords, okay. which is really fun because our kids, um, they design uh, swords out of cardboard, mm-hmm. and then we cut them out and put um, dowels in them so that they'll hold up, actually, and then we yeah, teach sorry. them sword fighting through that. Very cool. Yeah, and so they put on their own production at the end of the two weeks. In the Arboretum? Or, mm-hmm. Okay, and the, the, I assume their parents and whoever yep. comes in. We, f- we fill up. Or tons of parents come and family. And these That's camps run all summer or uh, uh, So we're through July. So we've got okay. session one is, as I said, July 10th through July 21st. And then we've got session two, which is um, July 24th through August, 6th, August 4th. And that also, at the same time, is that we have teen camp. Oh. So uh, teen camp actually happens at the Vets Memorial Theater. Okay. So it's a little bit more serious there. They go into, um, they've got movement classes, some voice and speech. They get a little bit more hands-on with learning about Shakespeare's history. Mm -hmm. So we go into Will Will in the World there. And um, then they, as well, put on their own production, having done some monologue studies and I assume that's for ages uh, after 13, yeah, 14 so through 17 or whatever. 14 through 17 about. Excellent. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're open to uh, boys and girls in yep. both camps, I assume. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, tell me a little bit about Shakespeare in school. I assume that happens uh, once school's in session. Yeah, so that's with our Midsummer Night's Dream. So okay. that's our student matinee program. So this year we've got um, three student matinee productions. And I believe they're uh, September 28th. October 5th and October 12th. Impressive. At 10 a.m. Okay. Yeah. So um, what those are is we just started this last year, and uh, I'm particularly excited about this program because um, we've had schools from all over the region start. Um, oh, okay. They come to Davis. Us. Yeah, or so they come to, to Davis. Or, okay. Mm-hmm. So they'll come to Davis to the vets and see a 10 a.m. matinee production of the show okay. with the talkback session. And there is the option for a school to hire on, hire on um, an additional preliminary workshop beforehand. So two of our actors will come to their school okay. and give a little introduction to Shakespeare and the plot. Yeah. And that was, um, last year we did it with Romeo and Juliet, and it was uh, just really exciting to see these kids so excited about Shakespeare and then right. having this personal interaction with the characters um, and the the gentleman who played Romeo and we went to several schools and um, there's a certain age of kids just get really excited about yeah. that stuff too and I think uh, I'm not hitting them at that age, but sort of exposing them to that at that age, I think, is a good way to. Well, it's uh, also get them. to them not to be afraid of Shakespeare. That it is mm-hmm. English, and you can understand it, and it's just a story that you should enjoy. Yes, exactly. And so, without that fear that someone's told them they're not going to understand it, they they learn to love it, and then they don't fear the classics or other things. If someone tells them they're not going to understand it, they know. Oh, I can understand. I get Shakespeare. This will yes. be easy. Well, I think that uh, speaks to your guys' larger mission in general, the Davis Shakespeare Ensemble, is uh, ex- exposing people to that and getting over their fear of Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, we're running out of time, so it's a, it's a quick interview, mm-hmm. but I, I'm glad we were able to touch bases on so many different things that you guys are working on. Your summers are just jam-packed. And I know that they're very uh, popular with the Davis kids and parents. The, uh, we have, the again, the Camp Shakespeare. We have Shakespeare in school in the fall. And then to remind us again, we have Wonderful Town and Musketeers running mm-hmm. June 22nd through August 6th, mm-hmm. right? And yep. then starting uh, September 20th, it's a Midsummer Night's Dream, right? That's correct. So where do they go? Where do people go for more information if they uh, if they want to get more information on your what's your website? It's www.shakespeardavis.org. Okay, shakespeardavis.org. We've been talking to Gabby Batista and Sydney Schwint of the Davis Shakespeare Ensemble, and thanks for tuning in, and tune in next time for In the Studio. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having us.